Okay, so welcome back. Uh, this is part three in our series where we're showing you how to use this wonderful free piece of software called LabVIEW. And LabVIEW is wonderful. It's been around for many years. And there is, thankfully, since 2020, there is a free, what's called the Community Edition, that you can download for free. And it's got all the functionality of the paid professional version. So it's really wonderful. And in part one, we explained what is LabVIEW, why you would need it. And uh, it's very popular for data acquisition and control solutions in many industries around the world. We talked about that. I also did a free part series talking about control systems, what they are, the basics and how they work. I encourage you to look at that. And we also talked about how to download and install LabVIEW. And in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the basic operations, how you can use LabVIEW, what are the basic controls, and how to get around and to get things done. So assuming you've got LabVIEW installed on your computer and you start it up, you're going to get this opening window. And here you can go to Create Project, which allows you, if you click it, you can use templates, pre-made templates, to start a project. Or you can open existing projects you've already made. Uh, what I like to do is go to File, New VI, or Virtual Instrument. And that cuts directly to starting a new blank VI project. And as we showed before, what you get is these two windows. One is called a front panel, and the other is the block diagram, which is the logic behind the front panel. And the front panel is like a real-world control panel with switches and meters and lights and buttons and everything. So let's take a look at the basics of how you can get around and do things with these two windows. Now, the first thing you're going to want to know is the location. When you make a project and you save it, where does it go? So what you can do is you can go up to Tools and Options. And you need to get familiar with this option. And one of the choices is Paths. And you can set the default path for your temporary directory, your default directory, your default data directory, and your VI search path. And the default data directory is if you save a VI project, it will go to this directory. And you can change this. But by default, all your VI projects are stored in C users, and then your username, documents, lab view, data, and projects. Now, again, you can change that. But um, just be familiar with this tools options where you can change a bunch of stuff that we can talk about later. So now that you're started up and you know where your files are going to go, um, let's take a quick look at this front panel and see what's here. Now, as we talked about before, the, the first thing is this run arrow, which runs your simulation. This next one is run continuously in a loop. Uh, and this is abort execution and then pause. Now we'll talk about those later. Generally, we just need to use this run arrow. The next one is kind of important. We've got the application font and we talked briefly before about how you can change the font of the different controls that you drag and drop. And what you can do is you can select that and come up with a font dialog, uh, which allows you to change the different properties. And then you can change the size. It defaults normally to like 15, but I often use 36 to make it larger. So this is really important to, to make everything more visible. And then we've got a few buttons here that allow you to align the different objects and distribute them physically on your front panel. So for example, if I added some controls here and I wanted to align them on the left side, I can select them all and go here and select this align and they will all be aligned. So it just allows you to make your control panel or your front panel look a little bit nicer. And then we've got file, new, open, close, the standard stuff you'd expect, some edit stuff, view, project. And what I want to do is go to tools. And if you go to this first one, measurement and automation explorer, this is a really nice function that allows you to look into your devices and your computer and hardware. Um, so for example, you can look at 
the devices and interface, we've got a COM4 and a COM6 connected, and you can look at the different software. So we're not going to use this now, but just keep in mind that the tools uh, has some good stuff, and we'll talk about some of these later. And here we can, in the window dropdown, say, for example, I have just my front panel showing, and I want to show the block diagram. I can go Window, Show Block Diagram, and it will re-show the block diagram. Same thing on the other one. So I encourage you to take a look at these drop-downs. But that's basically it for the front panel. Similarly, on the block diagram, we've got File, Edit, Tools, and you can do a lot of the similar stuff, but I encourage you to look at those. But one of the big differences about the block diagram is that you can do some debugging, kind of like in Visual Studio, if you're familiar with that, writing software. You can step through your code, even though it's graphical, you can do a graphical step through to debug your code, so it's really nice. So we've got some features here where you can run, pause, you can highlight the execution. It gives you a graphical highlight as it steps through the code. Um, and all of these things here are allowing you to step through the code. So we'll talk about that maybe later on. But just keep in mind, you can do some debugging. And then here again, you can do some alignment of objects. So that's the basic functionality of these dropdowns and these icons. But really what you're going to be doing on both of these most often is you're going to be right clicking. And right-clicking brings up what are called palettes. And palettes are just folders and items that you can drag and drop onto your front panel. And the same thing applies to the block diagram. However, keep in mind that there are different components for front panel versus block diagram. Again, the front panel is buttons and meters and charts, while the block diagram is logic-based components. So if you do that, you have structures like while loops, case structures, you have arrays, you have strings, booleans, basically stuff that you would see when writing your code behind the form in your Visual Studio. It's the same thing here. You've got the front panel user interface controls. And when you right click here, you get the code behind all of that, file I.O., timing, and so on. So again, you're going to be right clicking a lot, but you're going to be getting different components based on whether you're doing it for the front panel or the block diagram, which is the code behind the front panel. So now let's start with a very, very simple circuit where we have one input device and one display device. So on the front panel, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to numeric under the fuse design system. Now there are multiple different themes available for your controls. There's the fuse design system, there's the silver, and there's others. So it gives you different options for your controls, and we'll talk about that later. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the fuse design system numeric, and I'm going to take a horizontal pointer slide, and I am going to click in our front panel, and then I'll go back to the fuse design system under numeric, I'm going to get a meter and click on that. And what happens is if you go back to the block diagram, it has automatically put the controls that you can wire up behind the scenes in this block diagram. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the output of this horizontal pointer slide. This is a manual slide. And I'm going to click on this and I'm going to bring it over to the meter and it has now connected up the output of the horizontal pointer slide. So I'll get values coming out of that going into the meter. And then I can pull this, make it bigger. But now this is connected. So all I have to do is I have to hit this run continuously, two arrows in a loop. And I'm running it. And what I can do is I can move this pointer slide. And you can see it's responding on the meter. So this is the very simple example of a control and a meter that you can expand on in using LabVIEW. So the basic concept here is you get controls, you wire them up, and then you run your simulation. Now it's really important that you understand that you have to match the type of data coming from one control 
into the other control. You can see down here it says double, so it's sending a number that's in a double format to the meter which reads it in a double format. If you don't match the formats, you can get an error. So what I can do is I can stop this and I can select this and delete. And what you will see is a broken line. And this is the kind of line you'll get if you try to connect up inputs and outputs that don't match. And here I've got one, I've got an output of double and there's no input that it's going to, so I've got a broken line. To delete all the broken lines, you hit Control B as in boy, and that will delete the broken lines. Now you can also get help on each of these controls by hitting Control H and selecting the control. And here you will see some help. And unfortunately, there's no description available, but it says it's using a double. So Control B to get rid of the broken lines, Control H. And then also to scroll in and out of this, which you'll be going to be doing a lot because by default, a lot of these controls are small. You hit Control and then scroll your mouse wheel forward and back to zoom in and zoom out. So Control B to delete broken wires, Control H to get a help window, and then Control plus mouse scroll to increase the size and zoom. Now, keep in mind that that zooming is only applies to the block diagram, not the front panel. So if I go over here and try and do it, Control mouse wheel is not doing anything. Some of these you can resize. One of the annoying things, it's a little bit difficult to resize some of these controls. We'll talk about that in a bit. But basically, that's the concept. You drop components, you wire them up, making sure you're matching the data type that you're wiring, and you should be all set to go. So now, some more important points uh, when navigating these windows. Let's say you just want to put a label so you can document either your block diagram, it's really important to document code, or your front panel. What you can do is go to, for example, a block diagram and just double click on a location in your block diagram and say this is a text. And what it will do is it will give you a little text box or a label. And it's really nice to be able to document and tell people what everything is. Now, the other thing is important is the mouse cursor. So for example, I'm moving my mouse cursor around and when I hover over this, what's called a label on this pointer slide, that arrow means I can left click and move that part of the control. So if I move it over this, I can move the entire control. If I move my mouse cursor over this meter, you can see here, it looks like it's allowing me to enter text. So what I can do is I can left click and select that and make that six. And it will change the scale going from zero to 10 and there's six. And when you see this pointing finger, it allows you to enter manual control of the device. You see, I can click on this and I can change the position. Now let's say I want to move these controls. Like I said, if you have an arrow, you can move that part of the control. But if I want to move this entire meter, what I can do is I can left click and drag and select it. And then you can see I get this arrow and I can move it. Otherwise, it's giving me this manual control, which I don't want. I want to just move it. So keep in mind, um, what I generally do to move a control is left click, drag, select, and then I can move it. Now you may also notice when you hover over this meter, you've got these dots that allow you to resize it. So I can scale it down. Um, here I can hover over this and I don't have any dots. Sometimes you can't really resize the control. There is, however, uh, if you get over these dots in the pointer slide, I can expand it like this, and I can expand it this way, and I can run this, and you can see it's back to what we had before. And we talked before about being able to change the font size, but just keep in mind, it's important what mouse cursor you've got. And uh, you know, if you wanna move something, left click, drag, select that control, and you can move it. Now, the real important part of this is, of course, the right click 
where you get the controls, the palettes with all the different controls on the front panel, or the functions, all the programming functions in the block diagram. And I really encourage you to go through and spend some time and just look at all of the choices here. There are tons of choices. You've got instrument I.O. with instrument drivers, Visa, serial communications, GPIB. You've got mathematics, curve fitting, numerics, signal processing. So I really encourage you to go through and spend some time and try to figure out what a lot of these controls are so you get comfortable with them. Now, I do want to mention a couple of controls that you probably will be using, and those are in the graph section. And there is here a waveform chart, but there's also a waveform graph. So why would you have a graph and a chart? Well, it turns out the chart is a real-time streaming chart of real-time data, whereas the graph is for a fixed data set. So if you have a big array of data and you just want to chart it, you put it into a graph. So keep that in mind. That can be kind of confusing. But again, I encourage you to just try things out and try hooking them up and running and seeing if it works. And if it doesn't work, figure out why it doesn't work. And that way you can learn about the controls and get more comfortable with what they do. What are the inputs and what are the outputs? So in the next video, we're going to put all of this into practice and we're going to build a very simple circuit like you see here which is going to connect to our Arduino and it's going to come in through COM6 and the serial port and we're going to have a loop that continuously reads every tenth of a second. It reads a value coming in from the Arduino and it's going to chart it on this real-time streaming scrolling chart and uh, it'll give us a good idea how we can hook all these things together and how to get a very basic VI or virtual instrument set up in LabVIEW. So if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.